What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Patriot Specialized. Today's episode, we're going to cover this week. This week has been, uh, there's been some highs, some lows, some highs, some lows. Actually, I think it started out lows, highs, lows, highs uh, going on this week, and, and I'm going to talk about it here in one second. Stick around. Across these plains and prairies, rocky mountain highs, fade off into the distance like ghost riders in the sky. Black smoke and white wine, steel horses side by side. It's more than just a living, y'all. Hell, it's our way of life. We're the last of the cowboys, the GDF gone boys. Eighteen wheels on the concrete, it's a slow and dying breed, rolling like Jesse James. Here riding with me, come on back and make some noise. We're the last of the cowboys. All right, y'all, what's going on today? I appreciate everybody tuning back in to uh, Patriot Specialized. Today's episode, we're going to cover what we got going on this week. Um, some pretty cool stuff, some interesting stuff. Also, uh, been kind of one of them weeks, it was uh, some highs and lows, and I think everybody. I think everybody in trucking, yeah, yeah, I think everybody in trucking has these weeks where it's, uh, you go from a, a real high to a real low to a real high to a real low. So uh, we're gonna cover that. We're gonna start out on Saturday. So Saturday isn't a day you hear me talk about a lot. <clears throat> um, however, this past Saturday, it was significant. Uh, it was two days after Thanksgiving. As you know, unless you've been living under a rock, or you're just in Florida and don't care, one of them too. Um, there has been some crazy, crazy winter storms going through the northeast part of Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York. Um, I think Indiana's getting it tonight. Michigan, the northern part of Michigan got pounded. I think Wisconsin was getting some of it, but um, what was significant to me was the northeast part of Ohio, where I live, somewhat crazy. Um, I got a call from another driver that lives in Ashtabula, which is uh, just north of me. They were getting absolutely pounded with snow on uh, Friday evening into Saturday. He called me Saturday. He said, "Man, is your tractor available? Because uh, I don't, I don't know that I can move this stuff." So I ended up uh, loading up the tractor. Here's a little clip. I started to do a little video about it while I was going, and here's a little clip of uh, of me starting the video when I was heading up there. What's going on, guys? So this is a little kind of different kind of episode today. Uh, at least part of it anyways we <laughs> we are it is the day two days after thanksgiving saturday hope everybody had a great thanksgiving i know i did uh it was uh it was real nice my daughter cooked for us uh she did a great job uh for once my wife didn't have to do it and that was kind of nice so we are currently there is a snowstorm as as everybody knows i live in northeast ohio um i say that a lot on the channel so we there was a snowstorm that is currently blowing through here and the lake effect we call it the lake effect machine and uh it is no joke <clears throat> um i live about 17 miles south of lake erie and at my house there isn't a lick of snow nothing not a thing at my house my buddy who also works for a and h called me this morning he lives in ashtabula which is right uh, right on the lake um and he's getting pounded with lake effect snow uh, they declared a state of emergency. <laughs> He's got 36 inches of snow. He is 14 miles north of me and has 36 inches of snow. So That was a little short clip. I um, I actually meant to do a bunch of video. I was going to set the camera out while I was uh, running the tractor at his uh, at his house. and I ended up digging him him out. and um, He's a guy that works for A&H. Um, I ended up digging him out and then I uh, went down and helped a few of his neighbors. Anybody that was outside trying to help themselves, dig themselves out of snow, I, uh, I went ahead and helped. Now, the, the crazy part about it, the reason you need, we need a tractor is at this point right now with, with the storm, there's another storm coming in tomorrow. Um, but at this point right now, Saybrook is, uh, Saybrook County, I don't, I don't know, right by Astrobula. Um, they are showing the highest amount of snow uh, and they're at 61.7 inches right now. 
And this is all in the span of about six days, the last three or four of which there really wasn't much snow. So uh, this was kind of over the weekend. They, they just got absolutely pounded. And um, it caused uh, caused the guy that, uh, a few guys, but uh, the one guy that I went and helped caused him, he couldn't get to his trailer. So he wasn't able to work on Monday at all. He did get his trailer dug out until Monday evening. And even then he had to take it to the shop because all that, he has a Conestoga and all that snow was sitting on top of his Conestoga and it was bowing down his, uh, his braces inside and there was nothing he could do. He didn't have a ladder big enough to get it out so he ended up braving it and taking it to the shop and they went up there with a the scissor lift and shovels and they got all that stuff off there but man that it, it has been crazy so that was that while i was getting ready to once he called me and i said yeah I'll, you know I'll, I'll load up the tractor come up i had a bunch of stuff on my personal trailer um, that needed to be unloaded so i said let me get this unloaded i had to move the truck in the driveway in order to move to get the tractor and everything out of the barn and um when I turned on the truck, this is where the problem started for this week. This is where the lows are for this week. Um, when I fired up the truck to just to move it in the driveway um, to get it out of the way, the uh, information center on my dashboard, everybody knows these newer trucks have computerized everything. The information center on the dashboard said D-rate in three hours. Now anybody who doesn't know what D-rate is, D-rate is when the computer system recognizes a problem with your truck that's significant enough to uh, take away power from the motor. So basically what's gonna happen as, in a D-rate, I've never had one happen to me, so I don't know exactly what, uh, what happens, but from what I understand, what happens there is you, when it goes in a D-rate, you're gonna drop your power by about 50%. Basically it's gonna feel like you have no turbo. And uh, that's the, the situation I was facing. It said D-rate in three hours. I called my mechanic. And I said, uh, you know, what do you think? This is kind of weird. And he can at remotely access our trucks to be able to see what's going on with the codes and the computer. And unfortunately, it was only saying D-rate in three hours. There was no check engine light. So there was nothing, there was no codes being sent to him. So he really didn't know. So we let it run. He said, just leave it run. Maybe it's cold fuel. Maybe it's just it detected it wasn't getting enough fuel or something. So we let it run for about an hour uh, and I came outside and, and checked it again and it said D-rate in two hours. So that uh, that's helped us not at all. Uh, so what I ended up deciding at that point was instead of leaving right then to run to Coatesville and make my delivery on Monday, I backed off my, my pickups for this week on that was supposed to happen on Monday. I backed them off and um, went to the shop Monday morning. I got to the shop, no joke guys, I got to the shop Monday morning and that computer center said four minutes to derate. I was four minutes away from losing all my power and being in a pretty pretty desperate situation. Uh, I think I still could have got it to the shop. I think I was pretty lightweight. I didn't have a whole lot of weight on as you guys saw uh, with the truck chassis, but um, I probably could have still got it to the shop even with the, with the lower power. But we got to the shop, what he ended up finding was a sensor that goes into my intake manifold uh it has it's a, a sensor with a little ball on it and it detects flow whatever uh it had completely it was completely gummed up and and had i don't know if it broke or if it got so hot it just melted off or what but part of the um part of the the sensor was missing i'll just shoot up the little picture the one on the left in this picture that is um the new one the, the old one's right next to it. You can clearly see that there's something missing there. Something does, one of these things does not look like the other. Uh, so that was fantastic that it was super simple. Uh, two bolts on top of the motor, brought the intake manifold. Took him literally less than five minutes to um, switch that thing out. And that was the problem for the D-rate situation. So while I was there, I said, you know, this thing's been this thing's been asking for antifreeze more than I think it should lately. So uh, can we check for, put the pressure to it and check for a uh, leak on the antifreeze? I can't find anything, can't smell anything. There's nothing on the ground. I, I, don't, I have no idea where it's going. I was, I was kind of scared it was going in the motor. You don't want it going in the motor. You want antifreeze going out of the motor. <laughs> so um, what ended up, he ended up finding once he got it under enough pressure, um, there was a small leak up on the top radiator hose and it was small enough that it would drip down onto the fan and it would just be, or I think it hit the side of the motor and went down and it would evaporate before it hit the ground. So I wasn't seeing a puddle and I wasn't smelling it because it was evaporating as fast as it was hitting the motor. So very small leak, but enough that it was, I was seeing significant fuel uh, antifreeze loss uh, within a certain time period. So uh, 
glad we did that we got that fixed too so that was all good and then while we were there why not because i already adjusted my schedule i said why don't you look at my light bar because half my light bar quit working this light bar is going to actually come into play more than once this week um I said, why don't you look at my light bar, see if you get the other part working. And Eric uh, Eric climbed up there. And, you know, I, I can't say enough about Eric in our shop. He, um, he For me, personally, uh, he does a fantastic job on my truck. He's always willing to, to do it the right way, always willing to do the job, and always willing to do it the right way. He feels phone calls at night. He feels phone calls on the weekend. And this is not necessarily within his scope. But he does it anyways because he cares. And, uh, and I just uh, I, I appreciate that, and I appreciate the, the work that he puts in. But he went up and climbed up on top of the truck and, uh, and went ahead and fixed the light bar while he's up there. It turned out it was just a little bit loose. Uh, there's a power rail that goes around the inside of the light bar once you take the top cover off. There's a power rail in there and if it loosens up at all it won't make connection and those lights will quit working so it was pretty simple he took the top off of it tightened it up a little bit put the top back on it everything worked fine so that was great we got that all done on monday and then ran down to coatesville to make our delivery tuesday morning got that um got that delivery made tuesday morning. i didn't film at all while i was there you guys have seen me deliver you guys have actually seen me deliver at that place so many times on the on the channel that i didn't think it was really it really needed to be recorded however i should have recorded a little bit because i ended up uh, there wasn't enough room there for me to spin around in their their parking lot so i ended up having to back out around a couple corners uh, around probably half a million dollar uh, airplane refuelers that were sitting there on both sides of their driveway so uh, that was a little bit uh, a little bit nerve-wracking <laughs> when you know that much equipment and that expensive of equipment is sitting there but uh, we got that done backed around there got out spun around headed to headed to our pickup we ended up picking up another round of those Doylestowns from York Pennsylvania over to Doylestown PA and back uh, we did that on Tuesday that worked out great i had no trouble there um, ran out unloaded reloaded ran right back and got unloaded again and then ended up uh booking a load out of the port of baltimore because we had a second round of the doylestown to do on thursday they can't get them ready fast enough to do it every day uh, which would be fantastic because i would just stay there and keep running these things but um, they don't they can't get them ready fast enough to do one every day. They have to do them one every other day So I knew that I needed to be back in New York Thursday morning preferably as early as possible empty So uh, I had booked a load with one of our agents out of the Port of Baltimore just running over the other side of PA It was like 247 miles 250 miles. I think a case three 365 excavator missing the outside arm uh, there was a fall off load that went in. for those of you who don't know what a fall off load is that is the extra pieces that they take off of some things uh, to, to bring the weight down a little bit to make it a little less expensive to, to uh, transport it they'll take these pieces off ship them on a separate uh, separate vehicle now uh, this one happened to have the outer arm the, uh, the the longer portion the outer portion of the arm I don't even know what it's called and the bucket and I think there was a couple little things that uh, that were on the fall off portion, but we got the main body, and you know everything worked. And this is a this is a real quick film of us uh, getting that thing loaded up at the port of Baltimore. Right, all right, all right, at the port, got broken down. There we are, right there. Trailer's all set up, ready to go. Now we got to find our unit. baby right here that's, our, that's it right there a little mini arm pretty good Let's see if it starts get this thing loaded up
about this load is that we have talked about this in the, a couple episodes ago where the uh, Baltimore, Maryland requires that if you are over 120,000 pounds gross, you uh, are required to have an escort. Um, so I got an escort set up for 9.30 uh, to Wednesday morning. Yeah, 9.30 Wednesday morning. I was at the port early, waited for them to open, got open, got checked in about 8.30, went back, found my unit, got it loaded up. You guys just saw that. And we were ready to go by 9.15, which... that everything went really smooth there that morning and uh, gave me every fighting chance to be able to make this thing to get it delivered because I knew the routing on this was coming out of Baltimore to go to Pittsburgh area which is where that was going um, you can't catch the turnpike because of weight and width on this particular load so turnpikes out of the question which oh man man would it have been nice to be able to get on turnpike but uh, it was out so our only good option from there was 70 across to 68 in maryland through 68 into west virginia up through pennsylvania and then into um, the pittsburgh area now <laughs> 68 boy whoo man I, I don't know if you guys have been across 68 but i am fairly certain that every mountain in maryland is on that road I, I, there, there must be 200 of them. I, it's it's a 92 mile stretch, I believe, from 70 over to 79 on Route 68. And oh man, does it like it just takes your will to live. Uh, it, it just like takes your will to live and balls it up in a little ball, and punches it a couple times, drops it on the ground, steps on it, smashes it in the ground, probably drops it outside, drives it over with the semi truck, and whatever's left is this little tiny bit of, of will to live by the time you get to the end of Route 68. The only really cool part, this particular ride across 68 was, I ran into one of you guys. Uh, Mr. James Beam, he, uh, he's a subscriber on the channel, he's made comments on, on a lot of videos. Uh, I ran into him on 68, he radioed me and we got to talking. Got to talk for, uh, for a few miles until my crappy radio, until uh, he ran, <laughs> ran away from me and got far enough away that my, uh, my shortwave radio, we'll call it, uh, lost, lost his signal and I couldn't hear him anymore. But uh, it was super cool meeting you, James, or, or running into you, James. I, it was good talking to you and uh, I always enjoy. James also made a suggestion on one of the videos about how to flip the back axle and make it a little bit easier about setting the neck on neck down on the ground and then flip the back axle. And I actually did that that morning at the Port of Baltimore and it worked fantastic. So great suggestion. Thanks for it. And uh, I used it and I'm going to keep using it from now on. So it was perfect. I'm going to use it tomorrow morning when I'm getting loaded up here in, uh, in Carlisle. So we got across 68, got up 79, and ended up making delivery in Cranberry Township. I did not film while I was there, only because those guys were super cool, and they, they, I'm sure they would have been fine with me filming. But I had got there really late. Um, there was only about 15 minutes before they closed, and I'm sure those guys wanted to go home, and I'm sure the last thing they wanted to do was for wait for me to be setting up cameras and moving camera angles and trying to figure out where, where I wanted it. So I ended up um, not filming at all there, but we did get it delivered Wednesday evening. Got it delivered, got my bill signed, ran out the door, and we ended up coming right back to Carlisle, Pennsylvania, where I'm currently sitting almost in the same exact parking space, I think. Um, I got here last night, which is also where I stayed the night before, <laughs> before I went and loaded in Maryland. So I've been at this truck stop three nights in a row now. And um, we got back to here last night. Ran down uh, this morning, first thing. Ran down, got uh, our, our round, another round of, of York to Doylestown. Um, the York to Doylestown loads. So got that run today and that went absolutely fantastic. Uh, I, today was unbelievably smooth. Uh, it, it was kind of crazy. Uh, I, I got there at about seven o'clock in the morning, but 
I messaged my contact and say, hey, listen, I'm going to be about be there about 7. He texted me when I got He said, you still on schedule for 7? I said, yep, I'm, I'm actually here checking in right now. He had the thing ready to go. I pulled down there. It was 7.22 when I was coming back around to come back out. So super fast. I got out of there at 7.30, rolled across, went to Doylestown. I got there about 10-ish, uh, about 10.15 or so. Unloaded, reloaded, super fast out there as well, and I was on my way back. I ended up making it back to York at about, I think it was 1.15 when I pulled back in there, um, and those guys got me unloaded real, real quick there as well. However, I pulled around back there. I got checked in. I pulled around back. I parked, jumped out of my truck, and I was going to take my chains off and get everything set up and ready to go so when they came over the forklift, they could just pick it off and go. And I looked up, and this is what I saw. Yeah, yeah, that'd be my light bar. That'd be my light bar that the two braces that were welded onto the part of the top of my headache rack broke. And that thing was literally sitting up there by the grace of God. Uh, it, 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 there was nothing holding it except God's will for me not to destroy a $2,000 uh, $2, uh, light bar. So uh, I, I appreciate that. And I, I you know, said a little prayer before dinner tonight, thanking him for, uh, Thanking him for taking care of me on that one, but so we're gonna have to deal. What I ended up doing with that was there really nothing I could do except uh, I ended up get, running the wires off, snipping the wires, pulling that thing down. I ended up wrapping it up in a blanket and uh, in one of my moving blankets, wrapped it up in that, put it in my headache rack. Um, so we're gonna have to figure something else. Luckily enough, the states that I'm gonna be in tomorrow and next week don't require you to have lights it's not a requirement they like you to have them it obviously it's better people get them you know it's more visible whatever but it's not a requirement so i don't have to have my light bar for what i'm doing uh over the next few days in fact uh we're going to talk about this at the end of the episode but it looks like it's going to be maybe the rest of the year uh i may not need that thing so i got to look up michigan and see what the deal is but uh looks like it's probably the rest of the year i may not need that so what i ended up doing i just wrapped that thing up threw it up and then hopefully we'll get to they are talking about doing a def filter change uh the def filter change on my the after after treatment filter change on my truck so uh if they're going to do that while well, i was during the Christmas time when it's kind of hectic and, and I may end up taking a little bit of time off there. Um, if they're going to do that, they're going to go ahead and fix the light bar then and everything will be great. So that is that is where we're at so far. We're right back in Carlisle right now. What I ended up doing today was I needed a load to get me to Michigan and we're going to talk about that here in a second. So I, uh, I booked a load this morning. Who coming out of Carlisle here going to Toledo, Ohio, which is perfect because I, they need me in Detroit. My, my office needs me in Detroit Monday morning to start a project. Um, I don't know how much of this project is going to do for content on the video on, on the uh, channel because it's going to be a lot of the same thing. But um, we are uh, we're starting a pretty big project. We're running some uh, some dies from General Motors. Um, that have been in a store warehouse that they're ended up scrapping. So uh, we got we won the bid on it, and there uh, apparently there's about 800 of these things that need moved. So I will be very busy for the rest of the year, maybe maybe poking into next year. I'm only doing the ones that require the eight axles that are the super heavy ones. So uh, I don't know how many there are there of the 800 are fit that category. Um, but uh, it's sure looking like the numbers I'm seeing on the list, it's sure looking like uh, quite a few of them, uh, several hundred. So uh, I am going to be busy with that for a while. But that's, uh, that's why I needed to load to Toledo. That's why I booked this load going to Toledo. We're going to deliver that in Toledo Monday, run up and snatch up our first, uh, our first of the many General Motors dies out of Detroit going down to Canton. So that's what we got so far this week, guys. I am going to film tomorrow morning, and I'll probably put it on the first episode next week. We're going to show uh, the pickup tomorrow morning. I hope, anyways. I hope the customer will let me show the film uh, pickup tomorrow morning, and then um, I'll be covering the delivery on that and also the... Uh, the first pickup of the die so that you guys have actually seen one of these dies before i picked one up and i did a little short video on it uh when i picked it up at a different location so um not going to be super crazy on information but there is a couple things that are super that, that will be kind of cool to talk about so we'll talk about those and i'll try to make some interesting content here for the next month i don't know what we're gonna do so i appreciate everybody watching this is your first time watching the channel if you like what you see please consider hitting that like button if you want to see more 
hit that subscribe button. I appreciate that. Looking to grow the channel. Every subscription helps. And um, if you uh, also, a little update on the name of the truck. There are a couple names that are kind of running away right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let this thing go for a little bit until I'm not seeing any activity on it. And then, um, and then I'll pull from the list there. And then probably the beginning of next week, we will have a name for this truck. So I appreciate everybody making your comments. And if you, if you want to try to get your name up there on the list, to feel free to say, uh, share my video, share it with your friends, show it to your friends, have them make comments. Obviously, it'd be great if they subscribe to the channel. Um, <clears throat> have them make comments with what name they, they'd like to see. The more people we get uh, active in this, the better it's going to be. So I appreciate everybody taking the time to make these suggestions on there some good ones man <laughs> you guys are not letting me down on this i've been i've been kind of smiling all day looking at the uh looking at the different different names that people are coming up with so i appreciate that that's all i got for right now and we will see you guys on the next one everybody stay safe out there